So, Summers, aka Mr. Humble Rapper. And I actually, I mean it this time. I know a lot of people say that he's not humble, whatever. Honestly, he he's a nice guy, at least from the times that I've, I've talked to him. Now he might get in his feelings a little bit, but don't we all, especially in this game of social media and likes and followers, like everybody who gets a little bit of followers gets a little bit of an ego. However, Summers has now called out his label for faking streams on his SoundCloud. And, and if it's on his SoundCloud, where you really don't make that much money, or the label isn't, I would assume that they're running up the, the Spotify, it's hard to do Apple Music, but the Spotify and YouTube numbers as well. But I don't know why he's calling out his label. Maybe he doesn't want to be liable. Let's go to the story, first of all, where he posted it. But I, I see why he doesn't want to be liable, like the, the rapper who was organic and then now the label's making him look weird by putting inflated numbers on his SoundCloud. But but I feel like nobody would have noticed if he didn't say anything, you know? But anyway, he said, I hate how labels do fake shit on like bot views and whatever. Every song on Stuck In My Ways has over half a mil on soundcloud that shit not organic y'all that ain't me y'all know i am i i ain't do that hold up let me look i can't even read sorry i've drank so much coffee today that i'm like i'm reading the next sentence before it even comes pause but let's check something so if we go to a spotify hey i mean these are at over um, eh, half, a quarter of a mil some of them are a hundred K damn the songs that I really liked the slower ones people were hating on them this just shows that the the new underground space the new the new gen fans they really ain't trying to hear anybody evolve they just want to hear the hype shit like, like look <laughs> this, this is all like the newer hype stuff by summers falls off and then all of a sudden with the plug in B Picks up again. But yeah, let's go to his SoundCloud now. I want to see some. Let's see if the numbers add up. All right. Van Cleef popping. 600K, 620K, 500K, 600K. I mean, as a SoundCloud rapper, wouldn't like where he started from, isn't that where most people would stream it? Or are they mostly streaming on Spotify now, given that he's progressed past just being an underground SoundCloud rapper? You know? But either way, I don't think anybody would have noticed because they would assume that he's coming from SoundCloud so that the streams would all be there. But real underground fans use both Spotify and SoundCloud. I'm going to be real. I go on SoundCloud sometimes to listen to new music, but if I'm listening like just regularly, I'm only going on Spotify. I I only use SoundCloud as like a discovery platform. And then if I find something cool, then I go to Spotify and try and like it and put it in that library. They pay out way more over there. So this is more of like a social media SoundCloud because like the reposting and like the likes are more public. Spotify is where I actually listen to music. Apple's cool too. I just don't like how they don't let you really make playlists that are public. Like it's a, it's a much smaller platform for creators or like curators. So Spotify, the playlist bag is, is it's way bigger on Spotify. Apple music is really for only the Apple music like team. But anyway, um, 10 K projects. I mean, haven't I told y'all about this, about that label? They be finessing the internet. They they know how to do it. Because again, these numbers seem legitimate. And there was an organic push for his album. Although I don't know how much 10K projects really helped. I feel like Summers kind of did it all by himself. Just because he's got kind of this space on lock. I don't know who else is really listening to it outside of that. Are there really, you know, let's say uh, a lot of people have listened to it multiple times. Let's say... A hundred to two hundred thousand people listen to it. I'd actually say that. I'd say that. So this thing again, if they listen to it five times, some super fans, at least on average, some super fans listen to it ten times. That's a mill, but some people probably only listen to it one. So five hundred thousand seems legit. 
But 10K projects, they be do they do be dropping a bag for these artists. But at the same time, usually they know how to work the internet. I don't know if they've really pushed anything. I feel like the only thing that Summers really needs is the playlisting, like to get outside of this toxic ass underground fan base. Cause again, like he's got it on lock already. I feel like you can't really expand anymore. They're already on Spotify hating all the new music that he's trying to make with the slower stuff that, that like this this is the type of music that's gonna get you on a Drake level. Now I'm not saying that anyone can get to Drake's level because he does it different. But if you're making the same music over and over, your fan base isn't gonna grow. You know? You gotta you gotta evolve to get to the next level. He needs to collab more. I was thinking about that with uh, a lot of the underground. Like, like they need to get some major cosigns. But I guess Summers has Trippy Red. But who else really is he getting with? Like, like imagine one of them gets with Uzi. But that was Yeet. I feel like you gotta be, you gotta, you gotta be given at, at least some sort of value, as in you're next up for Uzi to give you that cosign. Or else it's kind of like a risk. Like he's just giving the features to anybody. Summers could get a young boy feature. Wasn't he trying to get one of those? He was also trying to get a Yeet one. But he only got Desire. So maybe next project. This was kind of like him being experimental. Maybe the next one he'll he'll like load it with features. I feel like that's what you really need to do. Because he already has a lot of music out. I feel like his fans already are messing with stuff. Can and Lucky. Yeah, but Lucky isn't like... Lucky and Can Can and as much as Lucky hit 20k or whatever 21k first week like he's still in he, he's at the top of this same box or realm. He's not like Yeet status yet where he's going to 60k or even like Don Tolliver with the 30k's. Although Lucky is one of the most organic fan bases so I can't hate whatsoever. Like I like Lucky. Um and he just he just gets numbers by himself. But it's not like if, it, like Trippy's bigger than Lucky. So Summer's getting the Trippy feature was bigger than Can Can working with Lucky. But who could Summer's work with other than like NBA Youngboy? Is there really anybody else? It has to be someone more on like this internet side of things. Any of the street rappers would just, it would, it would look so inorganic. Like if you got like Nardo Wick or something. And that's another thing that Lucky needs. Lucky needs a cosign as well. Not he doesn't need one, but I'm saying if any of these artists want to go to the next level, that's what we were talking about last stream with Jace, with the whole snitching allegations or just snitching, not allegations, because it's all in paperwork. That he he because of that incident, he lost basically the access to a lot of artists, similar to like what's happening to Gunna likely now. And so will he be able to hit to the next level? Because the rap game is so synonymous with uh, association. Like people will listen to you just if they know you're cool with some people. Like if you're if you're part of Lil Baby's camp, like the Lil Baby fans will just mess with you off that. They, they probably intrinsically don't even like their music, but they're hypnotizing themselves to like your music or NBA Youngboy, like any of his artists. I'm sure the young boy fans are riding and dying for them. Jay says he's too big for features now. What does that even mean, bro? Unless you're Drake, you're not too big for features. It's like a bag. It's a it's a bag. All you gotta do is get the label to pay for the big feature, and then you get the back end off of it. It's literally like a it, it's a gold mine. The music industry is such a gold mine. If you know how to finesse it though. If you don't and you flop. Sorry, Yeet and Fago hit the had an, bleh, hit another level when they got the Uzi cosign. Yeah, but I feel like So Fago. I don't know the Uzi feature on So Fago's album wasn't really promoted. Actually, Pink Hearts as a whole was not promoted whatsoever. People are still waiting on the Travis Scott feature. I feel like that is gonna be he need. He needs to be on Travis Scott's album to really get that push. Otherwise, what was the point in signing to him? Because it's not like Travis Scott has done anything. Sure, he's brought him out on a 
sh- like the Cactus Jack show and the All Star Weekend. He's got him some deals with Jimmy Kimmel. He's he's gotten the Foot Locker deals. But in all reality, who that is watching Jimmy Kimmel? Like the the average age of people watching that on cable. I don't even pay for cable anymore. It's probably like 45. Are any of them going to listen to Sofago? No. So what was the whole point of that? Bro, skip all that, Bolshevik. Just put him on Utopia and you're good. On a on a hidden feature like Don Tolliver back in the day on Astro World. And then all the all the Travis Scott ragers are gonna be like, yo, who is this with the crazy voice? And they're gonna look him up. They're gonna be eating his dick because he already got a fan base too. Easy dub.